according to, according to, according to, according to. You know why? Because Matthew didn't sign his name, Luke didn't sign his name, John didn't sign, Mark didn't sign his name, John didn't sign his name. These are assumed anonymous books. Anonymous books. Attributed to God. I said, this is not the Injil. You see, even in your Arabic translations of these books, Arabic translations, it says, Injile Matthew, means the Gospel of Matthew, Injil is used. Injile Marcus, Injile Lucas, Injile Johanna. The one we believe in is Injile Isa, the Gospel of Jesus, what he preached. That is what we believe in as from God. And the scripture. When you look at these books, Matthew, Mark, it says these are the Injil or the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We believe in the Gospel of Jesus, the one that he preached. And we are told by Matthew that he went to a certain place and he preached the Gospel. Mark says he went to a certain other place and he preached the Gospel. Luke says he went to a certain place and he preached the Gospel. John says he went to another place and he preached the Gospel. I said, did he have a book under his arm? Did he have a book under his arm? No. Whatever he preached was from God. That is what we believe in. If you can produce a document called Injile Isa, the Gospel of Jesus, we would be very happy to give it a recognition, to find out and verify whether it is from God and accept it as such. But what you have is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and J.B. Phillips, a prebendary of the Chichester Cathedral in England, a paid servant of the Anglican Church. When writing about Matthew, in his preface, he says, Early tradition ascribed this gospel to the Apostle Matthew. Early tradition. That's what people said. But scholars nowadays almost all reject this view. Which scholars? Jewish scholars? Hindu scholars? Muslim scholars? No. Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say that Matthew didn't write Matthew. They say... He said, the author whom we may still conveniently call Matthew. Conveniently. Why conveniently? Because instead of me telling you the first book of the New Testament, chapter 9, verse 9, the first book of the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 17, I'm wasting your time and mine too. So he says, no. I said, Matthew 9, 9, Matthew 5, 17, conveniently, I'm using the term Matthew. He said, the author whom we may still conveniently call Matthew has plainly drawn on the mysterious Q, again in inverted commas. That stands for the German word quella, sources, which might have been a collection of oral traditions. He has used Mark's gospel freely. In the language of the school teacher, he was copying wholesale from Mark. Matthew, an eyewitness and a ear witness to the happenings with Jesus, one of his disciples, his apostles. He goes and copies a 10 year old boy who wasn't there. Does it make sense to you? A man who is an eyewitness and a ear witness, a companion of Jesus. He goes and copies a 10 year old boy who wasn't there. Does it make sense to you? And you say this is the word of God. The genealogy between Matthew and Luke. We are given 66 fathers and grandfathers to Jesus. In a genealogy of 66 fathers and grandfathers, except for one name, no two names are identical. Separate list. Everyone is a different name. Brother Swaggart says, one is the genealogy of Mary and one of Jesus. I say, why of Mary? Does the book say that? No. The book says this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The other one ends with Jesus Christ. There's no Mary inside. 66 names, no two are alike except one. And the father of Jesus Christ, allegedly, God Almighty, he is not there. Can you imagine? God Almighty dictating the genealogy of his son in inverted commas. And yet he leaves himself out. He is going out of his way to dictate two genealogies with 66 names and he is not in it. He is not there. I am asking what is he trying to tell you? What is he really trying to tell you? When his name is not there. A man who had no genealogy, we believe. No genealogy. He was born miraculously, without any male intervention. You give him 66 fathers and grandfathers, and you say, this is God Almighty dictated. He says, we Muslims, Brother Swagat, we take strong exception to this type of handling of this mighty messenger of God. We say, he was a mighty messenger of God, he was born miraculously. The Holy Quran testifies to that. 
It has made a thousand million Muslims in the world today without any, any kind of proof from the Christians to believe that Jesus Christ was born miraculously and he was the Messiah. He was the word which God bestowed upon Mary. I will be dealing with this subject tomorrow night as Muhammad the natural successor to Christ and I'll be open to further questions besides the questions this evening. So with these words, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very grateful to the community here for creating such an opportunity for me to share the platform with the, the greatest charismatic speaker in the world today, Brother Jimmy Swaggart. I think it's a privilege and an honor for me. And now, for 10 minutes, Reverend Jimmy Schwager. I look at the Bibles that Mr. Didat has, and from the Quran, Surah, what we call chapter 62 and 5, it says, as the likeness of the ass carrying books, as the donkey is unaware of the value of the load on its back, so some men are ignorant of the spiritual treasure they hold in their hands. What does the Bible produce? That is the ironclad evidence, what it produces. I was in Africa a short time ago and I was with a group of ministers and I was being introduced to them and speaking with them and I asked or I didn't ask him but he was asked how did you become a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ you see Jesus cannot be the Messiah and a great prophet and a liar at the same time He is either who he said he was, or he's a liar. And he's not a liar. Amen. He said, this is the way I became a minister of the gospel. He said, one of my closest friends was a Christian. We argued incessantly over Islam and Christianity. One day, the young Christian said, there's a demon-possessed man, you know, in St. John, I'm sorry, St. Mark, chapter 16 and verse 17, it says, in my name they'll cast out devils. This is a book of power. Millions upon millions have been healed by the power of God by invoking that mighty name of Jesus. Millions have been changed instantly from the worst bondages that hell could ever produce, such as he mentioned. <laughs> By the power of the word of Almighty God, I remind you that no dead book could produce those type of results. You can go in our church, and over half the people there were former alcoholics, drug addicts, every bondage that hell could muster. And I know your religion of Islam believes in hell, but tonight they are free by the power of Almighty God, set free in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ produces results. It breaks the bondages of sin. It fills the empty heart. He said, we went, I went with him, he was going to pray for this man, demon-possessed, a maniac. He said, when we arrived, he was frothing at the mouth. He said, I've never seen anything like it. And he said, my friend prayed for him with no visible results. And he went to get another minister, and I was left alone with this maniac. And he said, I think I will 
pray for him myself. And he said he prayed in the name of Mohammed, come out of him. I ask him, what happened? Nothing. He prayed several times in the name of Mohammed, come out of him. 